will show you how to generate a genetic distance matrix using Dean McGee's uh, Y-DNA comparison utility. The first thing to do is to go into your uh, project uh, classic uh, results page and to export the results as a spreadsheet. If we click on that, it will then export it to my downloads folder down here. There we go. And the next thing to do is to go to uh, Excel. So let's do that. And then click on File, click on Open, and find the file that you've just, just downloaded. And it will be here at the very, very bottom. And here we go. That's the file there. We open it and it opens as this file here. Now it will have uh, a couple of columns that you need to uh, delete and we will do that by just highlighting those and clicking delete. So that's columns two to five so that you're just left with the uh, kit number uh, and immediately followed by the marker values for each of the markers in turn. There are several other things that we need to do with this uh, sheet. Uh, the first thing is we need to convert any multi-copy markers, such as DIS385, which appear in a single column. We need to convert it into two columns. And the way to do that is to highlight the column next to it, to the right, and click on Insert. And that will give us an extra column. There are two values for DIS385, we're going to split them into two separate columns. And to do that, we click on, uh, go to the top here, click on Data. Uh, well, first of all, we highlight the, the DIS385 column, then we click on Data, then we go to Text to Columns. We click on Delimited, click on Next, and we're going to click on Other, and we're going to insert this little tab feature here and as soon as we do that you see that it converts it to two separate columns. Let me show you that again. Delete that it goes back to 14-14. If we include a dash it, it separates it into two separate columns. We click on next, click on finish and you can see that the uh, the second of the values has now been moved into this column. We'll repeat that for the other multi-copy markers such as this 459 by clicking on the adjacent column and clicking insert then going back to the DIS459 column, clicking on Data, Text to Columns, Delimited, Next, Delimited by a dash, you can see it's already split there because it remembers it from last time, click on Next, click on Finish, and 8 and 9 has gone into 8 in one column and 9 in the next. And if you want to, you can put 459B as the title for that one. And we'll do the same for, for all the rest of them. Uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to delete each of these headings. Genetic Family 1, Genetic Family 2, and go through the spreadsheet just so that it's kit numbers in, in column 1 and markers in every other column. Now, I've prepared one previously, and let me show you that. Here it is here. So this is the finished uh, column, and what we're film, f finished spreadsheet rather, and what we're going to do is um, now copy and paste it into Dean McGee's utility. But first of all, let me show you the web page for Dean McGee's utility, and here it is. Here, here is the actual address: mymcgee.com/tools/yutility.html. And we're, we've clicked on FTDNA mode. Make sure that you click on FTDNA mode. You'll probably find it around about here if you just go to the home page. The other thing to note is that if you have um, more than uh, two copies of three nine of DIS nineteen, then you have to click uh, this checkbox here. The same for DIS four six four A B C and D are normally ch checked. I have an extra value for one of my uh, project members, so I've ticked on E as well, 
And the other thing to note is that after dis 565, the numbering sequence does not match the FTDNA sequence. So it's important to um, delete and uncheck all of the boxes in this particular um, column here, this particular row rather. So that's what I've done. I've unchecked all of those in that row, um, apart from this 714, which shouldn't be there. Uh, so after that, these will normally be ticked. Um, I untick all of these because we just want to generate a genetic distance chart. If you like, you can leave these ticked and see what it generates. And if you want to generate a, a Philip data and a Fluxus type diagram, a phylogram, then you, if you click TM or CA, it will generate that type of uh, data that you can cut and paste into a Philip program. But we just want to focus on genetic distance, and I'm leaving all of the other values as default. Now you can see I've previously pasted everything in here. I'm just going to clear that, and then I'm going to go back to the Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to paste everything from the kit number all the way across to this 565 which is going to be around about uh, where is it gone now 113b it's somewhere around here there we go is that it Yes, there we go, 565. So this BQ is the cell reference. And I'm going to go all the way down to the last uh, entry, which is row 90. So there we go, row 90 and BQ. And then I'm just going to simply copy that, edit, copy, and then go back to my Dean McGee utility and simply right click and paste and all the numbers go in there then if I click on execute and wait for a few minutes it will generate this wonderful genetic distance table and uh, this this matrix lists everybody in the project and you can see already that there are small clusterings of uh, uh, related individuals around the the central diagonal uh, line um, and these uh, correspond to each of the genetic families that I have previously identified in the project. So this is a very good way of identifying people that cluster together. And again, you're looking for people who have a genetic distance of zero or one. Um, in this particular situation, you can see that the number of markers tested is only 12. And so a genetic distance of zero out of 12 is not particularly relevant and uh, these members should be encouraged to upgrade their results to a 25 marker or a 37 marker test. And that is how we generate a uh, genetic distance chart using Dean McGee's YDNA comparison utility.